I've done a number of videos in the past about using the Line 6 Helix as an audio interface. And one of the probably least talked about, and I'm guessing one of the most underused, but incredible features of the Line 6 Helix floor unit is the fact that it has a single mic preamplifier built into it, which allows us to use it for a wide variety of purposes. First and foremost, if the Helix was the audio interface that was kind of the center of our small home recording studios, and we only occasionally recorded sources with a real live microphone, that one mic pre might be all we need. But in audio circles, when you get to the professional level, you hear a lot of folks discussing the quality of microphone preamplifiers. And it becomes an endless discussion of which is the best or which has a character sound to it or maybe just a cleaner sound to it. And there's a lot of really great discussions that go on there. And while I'm of the belief too that maybe not one single mic preamplifier is going to be great for every particular purpose and what I mean by that is maybe if we're recording drums we want a certain character to a mic preamp rather than a very clean mic preamplifier whereas maybe if we're recording an acoustic guitar we want something a little cleaner and more pristine or whatever the producer or engineer sees fit and so it is nice to have a variety of different tools at our disposal. The Helix mic preamplifier is obviously going to fall under more of a, a very basic clean mic pre it's really probably not going to add much character, but there is one little trick up the sleeve that it does have when using the Helix processing. Now, I don't think anybody is going to buy a Line 6 Helix because it has a mic preamplifier, but it's more of an additional add-on feature that can be a nice thing to have. I think when we're buying our Helix, most folks are buying it as a guitar modeling processor or an effects pedal board to maybe use with a real guitar amplifier. But because this topic isn't spoken about very often, I wanted to give you a look into just how good or maybe how bad the Helix mic preamplifier actually is. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to do some comparisons with some audio files today. In my home studio here, I'm lucky enough to have a couple varieties of different mic preamplifiers. I don't do a lot of microphone recording in here, so I don't really have the need to have the same selection of mic preamps that I've had in the past. But I do have a very cool mic preamplifier from my good friends over at Warm Audio. And it is right down here to my left. It's a WA273EQ, which is basically their recreation of a Neve 1073 mic pre and EQ. Now, this is available in various formats. I have the dual pre and EQ version. You can just get it as a single mic pre with no EQ as well. For the audio examples you're going to hear today, I only used the mic pre section. I turned the EQ off. I didn't want to have any other things influencing the sound. This is just to listen to the mic preamplifier alone. I also have my main audio interface over here to my right, which is the Focusrite Claret Plus 4 Pre. And that's what I use for all my analog to digital conversions and recording everything that I do in the studio here. But it also has four decent quality mic preamplifiers built into it. So we're gonna be able to compare the mic pre's from the Claret Plus 4 Pre, the warm WA273EQ to the Helix mic pre and let you hear what these are capable of. Now mic preamplifiers like the warm audio WA273 also have some other features built in. For instance, we have a tone button which changes the impedance of the input transformer which then again, changes the overall tone. The other thing that something like the warm audio mic preamp is going to have that other preamps may not is it's going to have the ability because of that input transformer to drive the input stage of that preamp and get more warmth, let's call it, or drive it into an analog distortion. That you gotta be careful not to drive too far. And I'll have an example of what happens when we do drive it too hard as an example in this video. But the Helix also has a cool feature that we have a built-in studio mic pre that's kind of mimicking the style of pre that the warm audio is. So we can also add that and I'll have some audio examples of that. So here's what I did. Now, all I really have the ability to do in the studio here is to take my Rev Generator 100R amp and I played a little 
guitar part that I reamped through the RevGen and I mic'd it with a Lewitt Audio MTP 440 DM dynamic instrument microphone, one of my favorite microphones for micing guitar cabinets. I had that positioned exactly the same for each mic pre. I then plugged that into the warm audio mic pre. I recorded three samples of that. I recorded one with the input gain a little bit lower one pushing it a little harder, and then one maxing it out so that you can hear what happens when we push these mic pre's too far and actually get into a distortion that's maybe not going to be something we want. I kind of did something similar with the Helix as well, and I'll, I'll show you that, and you'll see that in the audio examples. I then plugged into the Focusrite Claret, and I recorded using two features on it. I recorded with their, what they call their air feature, which adds just that air, where the, from what I can tell, just like a boost to the upper end frequencies on it, uh, and we can just engage that switch, and some folks like it, some folks don't. But I have samples recorded with air on and off on the Focusrite Claret Plus 4 Pre. And then I recorded the Helix, just the mic pre without any processing whatsoever, just turning the mic gain up to an acceptable level. And then I put the modeled studio mic pre on it and drove it just a little bit, maybe even a little bit too hard to let you hear what the qualities we can get out of that are. You have to be careful with that, that you don't drive it too hard and get distortion characteristics that maybe you don't want. But I did push it a little harder just so you could hear what it is capable of and what character it's capable of adding. And we can obviously make the adjustments that we need uh, to get more or less of that character onto our mic'd tone that we are recording through the Helix Mic Pre and Studio Pre. So basically you're hearing the exact same guitar track that I recorded DI'd into my Claret Plus 4 Pre instrument input. That's then reamped back out through the Rev Generator 100R to a tone I dialed in very quickly through a Rev 212 cabinet with Vintage 30 speakers, mic'd with the Lewitt Audio MTP 440 DM instrument mic, and then through the various preamps. And that's what these various examples sounded like. So I tried to let you hear some different combinations of them switching. Now, I'm not going to give you my opinion here. What you're probably going to notice, and again, you would have had to listen on a very good set of headphones or a very good set of speakers to really hear any small differences that there were between the tracks. Obviously, the warm audio track where I cranked the input, yes, it distorted and clipped in not a very pleasant way. It was just pushed too far. But I did that just so you could hear that what happens when we start pushing that input a little bit more and the characteristics will start to be introduced. You may have heard quite a difference between the warm audio track with the input lower and the input higher. Maybe you did, maybe you didn't. Again, it depends on what you were listening on and how good you are at differentiating these little things as well. The Claret mic pre's are going to be very clean. Uh, there's not going to be a ton of character to them, if that's a, a word. Much like the Helix example that didn't have the Studio Pre block on it as well. Once we added that Studio Pre block and I pushed it a little harder, did you hear similar characteristics to what the warm audio mic pre does when it's driven a little harder as well? So I don't know if that was an eye-opener to some folks, 
folks to really hear the difference between the mic pre's or maybe it's not something you've even given any thought to. And I don't really want to give my opinion about this because you know what they say about opinions. It's really going to come down to our personal preferences, what we can afford to have. And that's another good question. You say, well, what is the price of all this? Well, you know, if we go over to the Sweetwater website, we see that a single channel with no EQ of the Warm Audio Mic preamp runs around $649. The Focusrite Claret Plus 4 Pre, the entire audio interface with four channels and mic preamp and all the other things it does, runs for around $699 US. And then obviously Helix is much more expensive, but it's not. we're not really paying for that mic pre. We're paying for all the other things it does. So we see we could spend a lot of money on something like the Warm Audio Mic Pre, and we have to decide whether something like that would be worthwhile or if we're good enough with what's built into the Helix that we already have with no other problems. And maybe we get what we want by adding the little studio pre block to it. Anyways, I thought I would just do a quick video about that as I'd never really spoken about the quality of the Helix mic pre. And I do know some folks do use it. I don't hear it talked about a lot. And maybe some folks just avoid it because they're a little worried that it's not great quality and that you can't get a good recording out of it. And again, I'm not here to tell you that it's competing with mic preamplifiers that are of much higher cost, but more just that maybe if you do give it a try, you might be surprised that you could actually get some really nice recordings out of it and it's something that we already have built into our helix i hope that was enjoyable like just some food for thought and i hope it maybe gets you to realize that hey i can use that mic pre and get some really nice recordings out of it please like the video share it with anybody who you'd think would get some enjoyment or use out of watching it also please subscribe to the channel hit the little bell notification to get notified when i put new content out i'll be back really soon with some more thank you guys again so much for tuning in ciao for now